Hello, hello. Welcome back in. We're getting ready for game two here between Flying Quest Challengers and Lit Esports. Cubby, you and I were kind of talking about it before, but that game really did feel like Lit just unfortunately didn't have many windows back into the game. Once they fell behind early, it was all FlyQuest. Yeah, uh, it's one where I think that Wits comp, like they need to stretch the map. And if you get behind early, especially the, the Soul Lane and Twisted Fate, like we saw Messages do some decent work later on in the game, but you also saw Messages be down like 40 CS, like by the, yeah. you know, 10 minute mark uh, against yeah. Quad, something like that. Like I remember it saying like 70 to 35 at some point. So, mm -hmm. uh, and also like the solo kill, I mean, he had a chance to at least get the flash out of way and have that be a positive play, but instead, he flashed trying to get the solo kill, flashed under the turret, and died. Not exactly what we want to see out of our challengers, boys. So uh, I think Wit want, want that game back. Want to go back to the drawing board, and we'll see what they got in game two. Yeah, and one of the nice things is here in Challengers League, we do have the fearless draft. So there are things they don't have to worry about necessarily going into this one. No longer have to worry about the, that Hoi here in the mid lane, or the forest, or the Rakan, honestly, because Chime was another... One of those instrumental figures here for Flying Quest Challengers, and I called out before the recon. I love seeing him play that, and he really showed exactly why I had highlighted that before. Yeah, we love when Chime is able to play engage and lead this team. Uh, I, I think the Flying Quest Challengers, again, they kind of just won their lanes that game. And yeah. I think top lane was close, which shows, like, I, I think that the story with, um, you know, Lit Esports right now is that like, they're a team that, at least goal difference at 15, I think they're second worst in the league. Uh, but it's funny, like, their top side's decent. Like, when it comes to Dragoon, uh, he's actually someone that, he's second in goal to 15, only to 30 in the top side. And he's oftentimes, you know, played two in some games, but other times left on his own when he's playing stuff like Mordekaiser. But Messages and Rock Boom, they're worst in their role at goal to 15. And for Rock Boom, that's not necessarily including a lot of Senna games either, uh, right. as he's yet to play it. So... That's not a, a great look here for Lit Esports. And uh, I, I want to see, you know, Master Boom. I know they're rookies in this league, but they got to step up and, you know, figure out yeah. now that we're halfway through the season how to function through some of these lanes because they do good things later on in the game, but you got to survive the laning phase to get there. And if you're up against a great team like FlyQuest Challengers, you don't have every aspect of your game firing. It's going to be tough to win games. That's what happened in that game one. Especially for messages there. It's like you're going up against Quad, who has been a the biggest highlight i mean and the thing is like my challengers are a team full of highlights right all their players from every single lane are exciting to watch like so jed has been someone that everyone's highlighted already before we saw him at a lot of the combines in the preseason everyone's like look at this guy this guy's going to be one of the primary rookie carries that you will have coming in and yet quad comes in here and has been absolutely terrorizing the mid lane yeah, uh, I, it's something that has been really impressive. I think the more impressive thing for me with Quad is that I expected him to be good individually, but I didn't expect how well he was going to work with his teammates this early on, especially given, you know, language barrier. I know that English is going well for Quad. They feel like you know, he's equipped to be a part of the team and be a part of the game. Uh, and it's something where Quad continues to show that, you know, he's a really strong player in this league. He's been a standout for me. Uh, and excited to see him continue to perform because... Uh, frankly, this is a team where I really feel like uh, FlyQuest Challengers, they're playing at an LCS level. I feel like mm -hmm. in their in his first split, Sajad, like he, he's the one member I'd be like, all right, maybe not, you know, this guy's LCS yet, but that doesn't take away from what he's doing in his first split as, as a marksman. Right. I think Sajad had more great moments in that game too. Uh, so I, I think that, again, for FlyQuest Challengers, like if for FlyQuest last year, you know, having that LCS team really disappoint and miss playoffs uh, given you know, the names and the spend they had versus this year where each team is at the top of their uh, the league. Uh, you, you know, at least FlyQuest, they're, they're behind Maryville at the moment. But that, that, we're going to let that <laughs> well, match I mean, decide. Okay, but yeah, but they haven't played as many series yet. Yeah, so, they're trying to know, match them today, we'll, you know. Yeah, we'll see how today goes, whether or not, you know, Lit can bounce back into this game because, as we said, Fearless Draft, there are going to be things that will change here for both teams. And so I'm really curious to see how the draft is going to kind of unfold here for Lit. And I'm wondering if FlyQuest maybe do they leave open some of these more powerful picks out not powerful as in terms of like in the meta but powerful in the hands of these members on lit such as mordekaiser there for dragoon especially if you don't have something like that olaf that you can play into it well man magical i know you've been watching challengers league and fearless but i always like to talk about what we're learning in fearless given that we're one of the early uh tournaments to adopt this i know we're at first to the trend but i i, I think that we're learning things as we go throughout the split right. one of them for me is that 
bans somewhat stay the same or bans are often affected by game one because sometimes you give over a power pick like a Malachi. And now if you're lit, you have all the more reason to take away a pick like Malachi given that you just simply cannot play it, right? So you're right. getting a ban that has almost more mileage uh, going up against uh, something like FlyQuest Challengers here. So curious if we see some of those champs taken away. Like for FlyQuest That's Challengers, do we see Varus banned, right? Ooh, uh, that like that could call be a change, out. you know? Yeah, but they don't. No. They, in fact, go yeah. for the exact same three bands as We've game seen, one. Seen that a lot, too. Like, bands just yeah. not change simply throughout. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, pretty much saying, yeah, go for it. You want to play that? That's fine. The only difference we do see, not Callista band there. Instead, it's going to be Azir. And then Rel immediately locked in again because that Callista is available. Do Lit want to grab that now? Even though Varus is something yeah. that we've seen many players want to go for instead. I, I want to see Var, uh, Varus here from Rock Boom. It, it will be his most played if he decides to lock it in. And I, I think Varus is just way too strong in the meta right now. Uh, so I, I think this is a no-brainer for them. And curious what they follow it up with. I think that Fi is something that can kind of get out of the Rel combos and you can use to fight. Uh, we have seen Kizno play quite a bit of Zin Zhao as well, if he wants to go with that pick. But we've also seen Messages and... Uh, Lit use a lot of the Seraphine mid. Karma is something that fits that mold, even with Seraphine being taken away. And it's something that they can hold as a flex throughout all a draft. So uh, I like this Karma. It's something that can pair well with the Varus. It has a lot of push early, and you can throw it mid as well. Especially because with that rail locked in, I was talking about Kalista, something that was available. They could have gone for that, but that'd be a really difficult lane to do so into Varus yeah. Karma. So uh, adapting to that on the fly, saying, okay, Take Jin instead here. Wow. Sajed into that bot lane. Not really wanting to go for the, the Wombo combo there with throwing the Rel in, which again, Rel could also be flexed around. That can still go for Shade into the jungle. Yeah, I, I expect it to be jungle, especially with Karma locked in. You don't want to be playing Rel into Karma. I know you can delete the shields, but I think it's really tough uh, to play in that lane. You're, you're really going to get poked out. So uh, first Jin for Sajed this split, uh, going into the Varus, trying to answer some of the poke. He will be under a lot of duress, but Jin does have an okay landing phase. So you can very much play, you know, around those windows. I think the FlyQuest challengers, they're going to hold on to a couple things. And technically, mm. everything in their, in their draft right now is flexible. Cubby. As yeah, Tawi is say, playable. Cubby. Yeah. I was about to say, I'm looking at this from FlyQuest. Yeah. And Chime, well, Chime's name might be for Bard. He always claims he's not a Bard one trick, never was. Rush. But it's something that could be played here with Jin in the bot lane. Flip things okay. around. Quad can play the Talia. Okay. Jin can play the Talia. Rel could go for Shade and it could go for Chime. There's a lot of things that you can adapt on the fly here. I think Jin Bard actually does pretty well into Varus Karma. I mean, you get blasted in the lane phase, but you can play Oh, afterwards. not level one. Not level one. Uh, I think against Karma, you're going to get blasted level one. Uh, as, as... You, you, okay, I know you're not playing aggressively enough then. that's the, uh, We've learned one thing from Cubby. He's he's weak when it comes to how aggressive he'll play level one. Because if you're playing like a Chad, you flash forward, you get the rude done. Easy peasy. That's what that's oh. what Chime would do. I'm calling you out right there. All right. Well, you know, I, I'm not a part of one trick, so maybe Chime's not that <laughs> up to sleep. Um, Neither am I. I, I just play aggressively. I will say that the Zin Zhao coming in, that, that tells me that it's more likely to be a Karma mid. Uh, and yeah. you can see they're actually banning out more supports. So right now, they're, they're very much operating under the assumption that it will be Talia mid with Rel jungle. I think that's correct. I think the odds yeah, of them I do too. putting Talia jungle and then Rel support, especially with the Karma showing, pretty yeah. low. Uh, and uh, with the Mordekaiser taken away and the Alistar, that uh, does signal that FlyQuest thinks that that Karma is going mid at the moment. Yeah, exactly. I, I would too. You see Zin Zhao, you'd immediately Wait, go, yeah, that's probably going to be Karma. That, that alley ban tells me that they actually are really thinking about putting this Rel bot, I will say. That, that is true. That, that is yeah. true. And they, they probably, because they may, might read that it's the Karma with Xin Zhao, that it's going to be the flex I, there. It's going to yeah. be Rakan in this bot lane. So it's now playable. you want to send the Rel into the bot lane. You yeah. can play Rel into Rakan. I, I I favor the Rakan Varus. I would favor that lane, but it's doable. Like yes, You can do, do it and get through. Uh, so I, I think FlyQuest Challengers have a, a couple options. Also, Surti has blind pick. I'm going to be honest. I expect Surti to just lock in Cassante here. I think yeah, that's the too. move. Uh, likely blind pick for him. You can yeah, I don't, ex I don't expect yeah. anything anything special there. Probably Cassante Olaf, you know? Just kind of go for that yeah. kind well, of style. I mean, Dragoon has the option of Olaf. No Olaf for That's what I'm saying. Uh, that's Surti, not, for course. Dragoon. I'm saying Cassante, yeah. then Olaf on the other side. Kind of go for that. Oh, wait. Uh, that Lee Sin, we did, I believe, in the LCK, see a mid lane Lee Sin recently. Ooh, so I fun. thought maybe, maybe Quad that one. was watching some of the VODs who, and be who, like, hey, who, you know. Who played that? Oh, God, I couldn't remember. Couldn't I can't remember. Really tell you. Okay. Oh! 
Trundle. Yeah, I like Trundle. So Trundle, it, uh, Trundle oh. is like very early on in this season. Once people figured out Titanic Hydra was busted, everyone was like, wow, Sin Zhao really abuses Titanic Hydra. Like, let's yeah. use this combo, right? And then mm -hmm. everyone figured out like, oh, Zin only goes one way. I can just play Trundle, build Titanic as well, steal all of his mm -hmm. stats and be better. Uh, and yep. uh, this is one where, <gasps> yeah, like a Trundle also Wait. kind of affects Dragoon's champ pool. Uh, <gasps> like, so for example, if Dragoon wanted the old off, Trundle was really good against yeah. Olaf. I know it's not a direct True. matchup. That's a actually though that Dragoon did play in the top side. So it kind of dissuades those picks. And ultimately, I really like what FlyQuest challengers end up with because I look at their ability to control terrain against Xin Zhao, Garen, two champs that just have to move forward. Lit mm -hmm. need to have a better landing phase and get ahead to make sure they have the gold to push forward is getting through the FlyQuest comp will take a lot from them. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, right? You, you can easily get kited around. Of course, you do have movement speed when it comes to Karma. Can't help you. Got to get around some of that. But, man, I look at what FlyQuest do. And again, got to give it out to the coach. The Rocco really reading a lot of this draft very well. They're saying, all right, we know what Dragoon likes to play. He tends to like to play things like the, the, the Darius, Mordekaiser. We ban those away. What does he uh, want to play into Cassante? Olaf. What's going to be good into Olaf? Trundle. So now he's forced to play Garen, which also isn't the greatest matchup there. I, I mean, I think Garen has some value in a Cassante. It's, well, not, it's just not the greatest. Is, uh, yeah, like it, it's I, it's doable. Uh, I, I think it's a little bit more doable for Cassante than the Olaf matchup. And uh, the Garen, I think for me, spikes a little bit later. Uh, but mm -hmm. Garen scales really hard. And yeah, he does. Dragoon is going to like, I, I think Dragoon will be okay. The, the good thing for Dragoon is that for that, they have a Karma, and there's not a ton of damage on Fly C. Uh, so I, I think that's kind of the saving grace. Like, if Varus is able to really have a strong DPS fight, I'm just worried about their front line trying to get through Jin, Talia, Trundle, Rel, even Kasante. This is so much ability for FlyQuest challengers to really stymie lit moving forward, uh, take stuns, and make sure that their carries are going to be safe on the back half. So. Uh, if Lit can play around that, I think their comp will... Uh, they, they have the ability to be okay. I just want to see Lit have a better early game because I think they really need the push they want to make this comp work. Messages in quad. Button heads initially. Just trading a little bit of damage. Messages actually... Same with uh, quad. Going to go for an early recall. Just want to make sure they're as even as possible when it comes to this mid lane. But not actually seeing quite those late invades like we did last time for Fly C. Try to get the vision there onto Kisno. Give Shaden some easy opportunities in the early game to kind of farm it out. And I will I will say, you know, we were talking about how I like this trundle. It does a lot to kind of counteract what Lit have drafted for themselves. But as you were kind of calling out, yes, the Garen kind of wants to scale into the game. But it does still do well in a Gasante. Mid lane, yeah. Karma against uh, Talias, going to do fine. Yeah. Varus and Rakan, going to do fine into a Jin Rel. It's yeah. not quite like last game where Lit didn't really have any lanes they could really play through. All their lanes are going to do just fine. I, I think that's a good call, my magical, especially given that I was kind of asking, like, hey, Lit, I, I need to see a little bit more from lanes, right? They definitely index towards that with this draft. Yeah. So uh, we'll see if they can make it work. And something that I think their team struggled with getting off the ground here and there uh, in some of these games, and it, it could be a good sign of improvement for Lit, again, taking it to the top team that we have in the league if they are able to push them around a little bit in the waning phase. I'm seeing messages taking a lot of damage there from Quad here in this mid lane. As someone who used to like to play a lot of Karma mid, like way back in the day, I okay. will say Kar Karma is a, a good for the first push, right? You get the Mantra Q, Inner Flame, helps clear out, but then you kind of want to get to level 2 to make it a little bit easier. But bot lane, speaking of level 2, what's level 2 for oh Jaden? And Plux did not realize how much damage was going to be there with the Ghost already popped from Jaden and picking up first blood with Rock Boom. Watching in awe as they already are losing out the lane. Uh, I, I mean, we, we talked about once Rakan was shown how you can play this matchup. Rel versus Rakan, very popular matchup last summer. One that Chime played a lot of uh, in LCS with TSM. And yeah, it looks like uh, Chime still remembers how to play that one. As that was yeah. all too easy. Uh, for Ooh, good challengers. shot there. Speaking of easy right there. Wad. 
They're going to get an easy advantage here against Message and kind of making me eat my words when it comes to these advantages I thought that lit had because now Shaden's like, hey, bot lane's winning. I can go for a bit of an invade against Kisno. You don't really want to fight that. Forcing Flux to kind of answer with Ignite. Flashed away, but the audacious charge crashed down, unfortunately. Kisno will also fall. Both junglers dead. Oh. The pull back in. Flux cannot escape with Message is so low. You got to be careful. It's not dead. Oh, Has no. to get away, but they've got everything. Oh, Flint no. Flashing out of there and leaving Rock Boom behind for a double kill from the support. It is a disaster for that as uh, we are talking about how they needed to have a stronger oh, early no, game. Oh, no, no, triple kill. Oh, he canceled it. I saw it coming. I thought he maybe he was going to actually continue to fight for it, but I think he's realized that everyone might be back up for lit. So Chime, I mean, that's still we'll cancel that for messages. Still really that's nice. It. Like he still canceled yeah. the TP. Messages has to walk back to lane. Uh, he's going to be down against Quad Sawyer, who also has double buffs. So that's tough. Uh, and I mean, uh, like for that, we were talking like, hey, they need to have a stronger early game, especially with Karma Zin Zhao. This is a duo where if it gets moving, it's fine. I'd, I'd be interested to see a replay of the last one. Thank you, observing team, because Kizno. He's got red buff, and this trade overall in the shade is decent. He has the Conqueror, he procs it, he steps away from the lethal tempo, he waits for Flux to come out. He flashes, finds the kill, but Shime, the insta-flash response, yeah. that gets the double buffs over on their team. Quad hits a great flick onto Flux, they take him down. The target selection for Flyquest Challenger is so good, and then also Quad. He was already winning out hard in the mid lane, so yep. messages can't really interact. And I know Talia is strong early and has push, but I feel like messages being so low again... Uh, kind of set things up for Flyquest Challengers to actually win that fight once they got two uh, buffs on their side, killing Kizno first and uh, easily forcing Karma out given that she was already low from the landing phase. I will say, uh, Chime, living up to my mantra as a support, the ADCs get the farm, supports Wait, get the hold kill. On. Hold on, how can he live up to your mantra as support when Messages is playing Karma mid, who has mantra? My ah, man, good job. I miss casting with you sometimes, man. Give a round of applause. I, I gotta to, take to advantage of it. You know, I gotta get out there <laughs> here and there. That was, that was a good one. You know, I, I, I'll yes. give you that one. Normally, yes. you know, normally I'd be like, hmm, but that one was good. You know, maybe he missed casting with me. Yeah, just a little bit, just, just a, little a little bit. bit. But uh, all right, we gotta put that on pause because we do still have a potential skirmishing in the bot lane because Jaden has shown up with time on the long flank there, making sure that Plux cannot battle dance his way out of there, and he's rooted in place. Doesn't have flash, no dance. No out. Like that call. Uh, the pillar making sure that it couldn't be Flux ing back. Rockham didn't feel safe enough stepping forward. I think that he could have uh, mm, after the no, Q. With, with Chime there? No, but uh, he, was after he missed Q. It. After he missed Q. I think oh, that he okay, could have. Okay, okay. uh, so th that's one where I don't know if that would have helped or not. Regardless, it will be a dragon going over to FlyQuest Challengers as Surdy nets the flash of Dragoon. And Grubs are being taken by Kizna. So... It's a trade, but FlyQuest Challengers, they are chilling. They are trading up. I think this uh, Dragon's a good take, especially denying it from the Varus lanes, which I usually expect to take the Drakes, given how strong Varus is really. FlyQuest Challengers still in really good shape. Yeah, but when you have a, a Jin that comes back to lane with a Serrated Dirk, when you got a Longsword and that's it, you're not really going to be fighting over any Dragons anytime soon, Cubby. That is a fair point. Uh, and Sajad, he threw some Swifties to boot on top of there. So he's going to be uh, moving, zooming, and grooving in this lane. It's Rock Boom. Oh, see, now that's Plux, because he's the one battle dancing. Oh, my God. He gets me back. Got him. Oh, okay. Well, I'll give you that one. Um, there we go. All right. We're, we're, now we're even. It's one to I one. Mean... We'll keep, we'll keep ta uh, tabs on that one. Just like keeping tabs of this bot lane, because... While well, Rockwind was able to at least shove this lane in, as you talked about, the Jet getting the Swifties, Serrated Dirk already in the inventory. A lot of these lanes are looking difficult for Lit, where maybe I cast a curse, and maybe that's what happened, because I was like, hey, you know, better lanes this time. Maybe they can win it out, and now every lane feels like it's falling apart. I, I think mid right now is the biggest issue, as messages. he has socks, a D-ring, and a refillable potion, versus Lost Chapter. I've never heard chapter. of Boots of Speed referred to as socks before. Yeah. I mean, and that's a, you, what you know what? Riot here, Cubby, change it. Let uh, socks of speed. I like this. I, I think that's better because they, they're tier ones. They're they're socks. You got to put the shoes over the socks. Yes, you you put the socks on before you put the Nikes on, right? Yeah, yeah. I like this. You know, I'm with you. I'm with you. Sorry for mentioning right. a brand. I am loyal when it comes to my shoes, though. Regardless, <laughs> uh, so yeah, Jed. I'm wearing only socks right now. I'm not wearing any shoes. Oh, if I was wearing shoes, it would be slippers. He's in comfy mode. Speaking of comfy mode. Mike West Challenger is trying to get thrown out of that. 
Oh no, they're coming no. in the spot lane. What yeah. do you mean? They just push the lane back. Kisner's like, wait a minute, I don't want to fight against a 2-0 uh, Rel this early on into the game. Uh, I will say Kisno, he did ding six early. Shaden, mm -hmm. I think he can still take this fight. I, I know yeah. he's down. Uh, Kisno actually hits that blind. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, they're gonna no, go. I think Shaden was actually able to get that, but the flash away there from Chime. Rockman will already pop the ghost. They don't have the ult there, so instead it's going to be the Hail of Arrows. But nice. Weaver's wall shutdown Boy. was already there, though, for Rock Boom. Really good cancel onto Chime as he wasn't able to buffer the battle dance. He said it was caught while he was trying to dismount. He gets uh, he gets the gray screen as a present. So good turn well, there from that. That's one of the things. Like remember back when we saw a lot of Rel Recon, it was the whole idea of this combination was whoever engages first loses. It's kind of the opposite of what we were used to seeing from either of them because the other champion could really counter them once they want to use that crash down, once they want to mm -hmm. use that grand entrance. And so we saw that there from Flux. And now it's allowing this one to kind of help out messages a bit in this mid lane because that is the identity of Karma as well. You're not really playing to dumpster lane. You're playing to buff up Kisno. I, I like seeing Kisno help himself a bit there. I know I talked a lot about, you know, how Lit has been a little bit weaker in the waning phase as a team compared to some of our other squads. But uh, again, Kisno, he's sitting fourth in terms of gold of 15 uh, with jungles. Again, Dragoon is second top. Top side of Lit has been able to get things done. It's just taking up with the bot side as Message. Good monster view there. Message has got to be careful, though. A lot of pebbles being flung at him. Well, they didn't realize that. Jaden was nearby, and I actually expected to see the trundle go mid lane, but instead he wanted to go bot lane, kind of scare away Plex and Rock Boom from trying to help out the jungle mid lane duo. Yeah, it's still fine for Quan as he's able to uh, snake his way out of there, and he will TP back. So that chunk on the messages actually sticks as he's waiting for his TP to come back up. He'll be empowered shortly, uh, which would be nice for the cooldown. Messages could go anywhere if he so chooses, but a little bit of quiet time here on the Rift by Magical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to talk about? Uh, How's life? How, 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 how the kids? What? <laughs> um, you talking about like the... I'm making small talk here, man. Oh, I, I mean, the, the, how, are the, how are the kids? That that scared me there for a sec. <laughs> That's, no, we're not quite there yet in life. Um, well, let's see. I got, so you I, got him again, everybody. Yeah. Got him again. He's speechless once more. But, okay, now I got to stay on my toes about. with Mad Max. Speaking, speaking of the kids here, there we go. Yeah, the, the Grubbies. The Void Grubs. And that's it. Just they reach the Void Grubs. The, you can see the kiddos. They're, they're spawning. They're being taken down. Yeah, trying I mean, to help what, out what their folks. What else did you want me to say? What else did you want me to say? It, it's just, it's even Void Grubs. 3-3. Three, three. You know, well, okay, what is your favorite nickname so far for Void Grubs, Mad Max? Ed and Eddie. Hey, you like Ed, Ed and Eddie? Yeah, Ed, Ed and Eddie was the best one. I like Mo, Larry, and Curly. I think that one's That one's fun. a good one, but I think that's it's the the first set is Ed and Eddie. Second is uh is na named after the three stooges. I I do like the Kevins as well. I just I find that endearing as oh messages. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's a lot of damage. And Quad's good. Eh, there's like yeah, really yeah. nothing else to say besides the fact that like, Quad's good. I I really like how he just finds these pockets. I I, I feel like individually Quad is just very sound and. I, it's something where, like, I, you know, as a long-time LCK watcher and enjoyer, uh, Quad is the gamer formerly known as Solka. Let's hold on, Rock Boom. He's trying to put on the blue suede shoes. Oh, but that pillar slowing him down. We got the tag there of fourth yeah. curtain call, but like you said, he was able to at least dance his way out of there. And if Plucks on the other side, they get the thumbs up, and they're actually peeling for this dragon. I think that this is a... This should be given by FlyQuest Challengers. Like... I, I think they could fight here, but there's no reason to, given the power yeah. windows. Like, yeah, I, the, their power is, is, I think, further away in the game. Uh, mess oh, hold on. We get a power, though. Botling getting the flash there. Such Ed. Got a lot of movement speed, but the... Oh, Magnus weren't pulling in Plexi. Didn't want that one. Didn't want the smoke there. Battle dance away from Plexi without that curtain call. Cannot follow up. The chime, unfortunately, fallen. All right, good engage there from Lit, as they are able to take the dragon, take a kill. Feel good about that. We do have Infernal Soul on the Rift uh, as FlyQuest Challengers get pushed around a little bit. The Rel is, what do you think of, uh, is vulnerable. What do you think of call. this opportunity for uh, Sajed instead of going for the Yeomans? Uh, honestly, kind of curious. I, I, yeah. I, I think that he might end up with both in the end. Well, but... yeah, yeah, but it's just first item. I'm used to seeing like the Yomu's then opportunity, not the other way around. Yeah, maybe he wants Collector. I mean, it is one where... You, like, your alts can be rather big uh, on, on the first hit. So, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need the move speed when you're Jin. 
you just have a crap ton of move speed, especially with Swifties, like, regardless. So maybe that's where his head's at. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, could be. But at the moment, Lit, despite the fact that that early game looked a little dicey for them, they've gotten this game back within a thousand. They're not quite that far behind, and in fact, they're the ones now putting the aggression on a fly quest, forcing out summoners, even forcing out Zerdy here. All the while, Dragoon he is helping getting that spin to win, getting a lot of damage, but look at Chime already showing up. Quads on the other side getting chased away by Plux and messages. Chime has to be careful. There's a lot of damage on a Zerdy, so it will be the steal onto that blue buff for Kiss now. Again, lit their comp. They have to walk forward and take things. A quad is a big part of controlling the terrain for this team. We'll see if Quad's able to do it, as that's a lot of damage coming out from Quad, who uh, actually, curiously enough, not opting for the Seraphs like we usually see from Artilias, opting for the Ludens Companion, so a bit more damage on this one. He really wants to control this mid lane, and he is doing a great job at it, because he got a lot of damage there on messages, what? throwing oh. out the pebbles, barely. Barely not getting that last tick. That was within. That was single digits, by the way. That, that was, was single digits. Well played from Quad as uh, he did connect the flick that will force messages back. He was still cruising towards that mowing and it's not quite able to finish it. Was removed from lane and lit. I mean, they're, let's hang it on. I, again, yeah, I, I will our say. Servers uh, toggled. Oh, yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, never mind. Don't even need them to. The malignance was. I, I saw that oh, messages was okay. hanging out in the base for a bit. I figured he had en almost enough gold that he's just like, I'm going to hang out and TP back in the lane. He does so. Lignit spot. He's back in the mid lane. Shaden actually already on this rip there. Old had TP back into yeah. the top lane. They're not going to fight for it. That's fine. They're, just gonna they're continue trading to out. Invade. Yeah, they're trading yeah. out bot and Kisna's getting ahead. And I do like this uh, for like lit. I think that the Zin needs to continue to farm uh, to be ahead. I know that his stats yeah. are going to get yoinked, but... He has the karma behind him, and I think that right. how Lit's playing out this mid game. I mean, when I see like this and this uh, for the Moignans and the Titanic Hydra, this is the time where I think Lit needs to go. And Kisno has found Chime. Yeah, but Chime crashed down away. Quad with the Weaver's Ooh. Wall, making sure that kind of closed the door on Kisno I, on his way out. I think he was expecting Kisno to jump in, and he was trying to lock him in. Yeah, he was trying to lock him in, but you know. It, it works still all the same. He locked him out, locked him in. Now they hop a ride on this battle sled as they crash and take the first turn. While this is going on, though, Rockboom's getting a lot of free time bot. Bonk. Okay. He crashes. Oh, wait, wait. That just took a lot of damage there. Ooh. Yeah, so that, that good... rift. Yeah. That was actually interesting. The rift moved people into the Talia pebbles. Yeah, that's why I was like, it was, like the camera. <laughs> got it cut away right at that moment where I was about to say, whoa, whoa, what happened there? I will say, though, I, look, I, I think that looking at the gold, though, this is pretty good for Lit. Rock Boom, he picked up that turret on his own. I know FlyQuest Challenger has got a decent chunk in the mid inner, and they can capitalize on that if they want to fight, but Rock Boom is going to be responsible for a lot of the damage. Like, Karma yeah. will do damage now, but it kind of falls off as time goes on. Uh, we are going to get a replay here. Oh, we yeah. were going to get a replay in the lower pit. Never mind. Uh, Dragon is coming up okay. on the map. We should see, I, I, again, I think that FlyQuest Challengers, it's their call whether they want to contest this or not. Uh, and I, I'm interested to see if this is where they choose to kind of get feisty. I think you should, honestly. I, I'm looking at the itemization right now, right? And they have some good spikes here. And the only issue that I really have is that Surdy doesn't have TP, but neither does Dra Dragoon. So Dragoon's got to walk his way there. Surdy's already getting his own recall. He'll have Ghost up as well, so he can join in for the fight. They'll all be here, and I feel like that's a strong fight here. While Dragoon, only on one item, you really need the two, three items to have that spike here as Dra uh, as the Garen. Yeah, I, I think Dragoon still wants time. I'm kind of curious to see yeah. him group up now. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why, again, that's why I'm like, I, I favor FlyQuest here. I, I kind of... Favor lit? It depends. Messages though. Oh no. Uh, I was oh, about to say, with messages oh, no. getting caught out there, I definitely play favor fly quest there because Plux has to use the quickness to try to get away. Barely survived. Oh. Dragoon at least silencing Sachet. One for one at the moment with Zerdy. Get the flash away from Rock Boom. You cannot escape from Kazante. That's fly quest. Three for one trade. Continue to dash forward and get the lockdown on the Dragoon as he spins to his own death. FlyQuest Challengers, it was Dragoon sniping Sajad on the back half, but the rest of the fight goes their way. And I got to say, I don't think messages can get caught here. Like, if he misses the Q, he's so far off. You can't position yep. yourself to get caught by a Rel Q. So messages getting one shot. I mean, Kizno and Dragoon, they're the ones that need to be in the front line. You should be buffing them up as this Karma, not 
uh, putting your, making yourself vulnerable to Rel, not even burning Flash to start the fight. Back half Rock Boom. He gets smelted by this Cassante, uh, whereas Kizno gets melted by everyone else. Quad goes in, they are able to wrap it up, and man, again, all too easy for FlyQuest Challengers. They remove the supportive piece of this comp first, and hey, again, this is a comp that is gated by Terrain. Like, Garen, Zin, they have to move forward. They have to walk mm -hmm. everywhere. They need the shields. Mm -hmm. They need the power in order to do that. When you remove the Malignant's Karma first, it's so hard to do it. And we saw that uh, come to fruition in that fight. I mean, that's why we see Dragoon with the Ignite Flash, right? Not even the Ghost that you normally see on Garen's, just because he can't really use it. You can't really get the full effect of it into this composition, especially when you don't have your movement speed there from Karma. So now... Uh, as we looked at this, it was lit, kind of keeping the game close for so long. But just another really good and solid team fight there. The awareness from FlyQuest to see messages, miss that cue and go, okay, yep, yeah, perfect. Let's pull the trigger, kill messages so he can't pop up Kisno nor Dragoon. Yeah, all too easy uh, as well done from FlyQuest challengers. They are trying to siege on the top outer turret where some of the map changes. Make it a bit harder to access top compared to what it was in the past versus bot being a bit easier. And Surti, he's going to try and take down this Karma. I don't know if Kassante promise. can win this. Yeah, I was going to say, he went for, you know, the Iceborne Gauntlet first, which is fine. It's, it's a good item for Kassante. It's just not going to really help you against uh, Malignant's Karma. Ooh. Uh, and we see that there. Also, Messages has that Empowered Root. It's very good against Kassante. Mm -hmm. We'll have to find a way to buffer that. Uh, Huber is second for Sajed. That's fun. Uh, so he's going to try and stack oh, yes. up those Okay, Sajed, Sajed, you like you him? Not? You're a fan? Yep. Yep. Based on this? I yeah, respect yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, Like, I, I, I'm a big Hubris fan. Got to get the statues, right? Got to get the stacks. That Magical's a simple man. He sees uh, scaling, you know, stacking damage and a risk being taken. He's a fan. Uh, you, uh, now you can just, anytime you fall behind, you can just spam and chat. We got the late game. All I need is a couple kills, guys. We stack up the hubris. We're fine. Mm -hmm. And the Baron now spawning on the Rift. Let's see which one we get. Ooh, okay. I, I will say, uniquely too, with Jin and hubris, you, you get more out of it, given Jin's passive, if you get AD. So that, that is uh, something that I think is a little bit unique to Jin. As Chime, he will spot Dragoon as he did pop the Sweeper. And Dragoon, respecting the power of Shade and the Quad, will retreat, sack that turret. Let messages catch. And now Dragoon is going to have to take the long walk spot. That was interesting from Lit. As yeah. the message just kind of overtook that lane, and now Dragoon doesn't really uh, have a place oh, to do? go. Yeah, he's, he's like, going to oh, take a hike. Oh. Takes a long walk of shame himself all the way to the bot lane. I, I mean, granted, there's not really... It's not like they're losing much, right? Turret's not getting hit here by Surdy. So Dragoon gets there in time to catch the wave. There's no dragon to play over for two minutes. Well, yeah, Baron's up, but with the changes they made in the preseason, not many teams, especially not a team with the Jin on their team, they're going to be going for a 20-minute Baron. I mean, if they did, you'd be a fan, though, right? Oh, 100%. If they rolled the dice like that, that man. Oh, 100%. You're you here bet, for it. You bet your butt I would be a fan of that. <laughs> All right. I just want to make sure. that I'm just checking my bases here. Uh, honestly, I mean, not too much to talk about. Black Quest Challengers continue to be really impressive. I... I know that, like, in our next series, we have TLC who are kind of struggling as a Weaver's Walls cast by Quad. Fine, Quad. Oh, denying oh. at the exit there for Rock Boom, but they decided to go for Pluck, which was interesting. Putting the pillar up. Five members strong here. Good chunk. For both teams. Dragoon kind of scaring away Surdy, but with the engage there for Lit pretty low, they're going to fall back. I will say with that timer, I think Quad gets Weaver's Wall back up for the uh, Drake fight, so I'm okay with him fishing there. What I was going to talk about, though, with 5C is, like, you know, uh, FlyQuest, uh, Team Liquid, and Disguise behind the scenes. These three orgs definitely had first pick of the litter when it comes to players this year. And uh, I know in one instance, like, you know, TLC and Disguise, they've kind of been struggling. I think that's, like, one of the big yeah. stories of this year. Like, those two teams, despite, again, having some of the first picks when it comes to who they wanted the field as a roster, just given that a couple are LCS orgs and Disguise, they had a lot of, uh, you know, followers and resources to put behind their players compared to some of the other teams that we have in our league. Now, them struggling, that, that's been a story. But FlyQuest, they have surpassed expectations, if anything. I mean, we continue to watch the team and be like, wow, like, what happens if this team's in LCS, right? Like, how competitive would they be with, uh, you know, some of the teams that we have there? Well, that's what so, we yesterday was about, right? Yeah. 
Well, I, I, I mean, I just I want to give him some deserved credit as I, I, I think I'm just saying that, that, that uh, I'm giving you some deserved credit. Yeah. Yesterday you had the the show match with them. Well, that I mean that's fun. They they were competitive in that somewhat. Uh, Surdy was kind of taking it to Blippo on the top side. I, I think Blippo wasn't quite awake yet in the morning when he was playing. He didn't expect the Yone uh, being pointed in the Aatrox, you know. Yeah, don't worry. I wasn't very uh, awake by the time I got called for this today, too. I was uh, <laughs> sleeping, sleeping in bed, but not sleeping anymore because we got... You know, this is an exciting series still. And that's one thing I do like about Lit is despite the team, you know, falling behind early into the game... They take fights, man. They'll take fights, exactly. And that's something I always respect in teams. Like, if you fall behind... Sometimes you gotta go for the Hail Mary. You can't just be like, oh, I guess the game's over. Oh, no. No, you fight. You fight tooth and nail for every bit of the match. Well, they did fight tooth and nail to secure that dragon, but FlyQuest, they took the fast track uh -oh. to mid, and they're looking for two turrets here. His message is... Has the flash, though. Doesn't get the root on the either chunk. Shaden or Chai, but gets a lot of damage. Pluck pops the That's quick big. Gets the pull back in. The flash away. Magnet Storm getting the flash away, but they get that audacious charge and the kill there for Gisno. The chime gone, the end gauge out of there. Could push back some of the control that FlyQuest had gotten around the top side of the map. Wow, I mean, FlyQuest, they're going to actually stick it. Quad's safe doing this as he has the Weaver's Wall, so he's just going to kill that wave. That might be enough to actually net the turret. Kind of cute from Quad there. Ooh, is it? Oh, was gone. It was close. And he's going to TP back mid to defend. While all this has been happening, Dragoon has been showing bot side. Yeah, thank you to our observers pointing that out. Surdy's so going to yep. have to go catch him. That... Well, Bot outer turret fall. So well played from that. They they got a lot yeah. here as Dragoon can get ball, out. Though. Look at Kisno Kass uh, though. Kisno has shown up here. Flash. Quad didn't realize it. He got tagged by the wind becomes the lightning. Had to get the shove back on to Jin Chao to make sure he does not fall. The root connecting. I wanted to even say it's like that's kind of why FlyQuest felt empowered to stay in that top side is because they did see Dragoon in that bot lane. No TP there yep. for the Garen. So like okay, we can at least maybe force this fight around the turret wall. Uh oh, Rock Boom. Uh oh, oh, Rock Boom. He has Flash still. So he could use that if he wants to get away, but he doesn't get stagged. That's going to be a body block. Not on the third shot. Has to be careful, though. What's getting that? Shaden's low. Wait a minute. 2v3. Rock Boom. The bot lane of Rock Boom and Plus go right back at Flag Quest. Touch head still hanging around, but so much damage. The Flash, though, will keep him alive. Will Rock Boom 2v4 Quad? will finally fall. Quad's killing spree. Then turned right for the killing spree of Surdy. Baron up. Does FlyQuest want to go for the play after that? I think they're okay with just the kills. I mean, there we're seeing some of the pros and cons of it in real time, right? They're willing to take fights. That was a great angle from Rockboom and Pucks to turn that around. Rockboom played that really nicely to make sure that Shaden falls while he didn't have Subjugate available. But then going too deep in the back half, right? Uh, they didn't uh, take their... They didn't rest on their laurels, man, Magical. They wanted more. And Lit got punished for that. As the Jedi, Speaking of wanting said, more, Dragoon yeah, definitely wants luck. that one. Spin to win. Doesn't even pop the ult. No justice is needed. Because it's already justice enough for Lit. But the re-engage, the pull back in. Quad getting a lot of damage with the Magnus Orb on a Dragoon. TP oh, on the other side. No escape there for Dragoon. Nor Kisno unless... Nah, there's Dirty. He's right on top of him. And Kisno taking a lot of damage with the Audacious Charge. Getting the knockout, but he's flashing away. Rampage! For Quad and FlyQuest challengers again striking back on the back. I mean, I do get the take from Dragoon. So Jet's free there, right? You're getting a free kill, but you had your bot lane in the death screen, right? So Kisno, mm -hmm. Dragoon, they go in, they die. It's another split oh, death no, for lid. It's I've a seen this 3v5. Oh, I've seen this before. Oh, this Dime is spotted, but he's already there. And they're looking for Rock Boom. Shattering Strike, the crash down with Quad, though, taking a lot of damage. Shot down for Rock Boom, all out. Pulled back in under the turret. No flash, no ghost. Only the hope there for Plus to save your ADC, but Shaden can chase the oh, down. Oh, well. shields, though. How is Rock Boom still alive? Okay. They're right back in the face of the lift, getting everything there. No oh, Plus overextending. Where's the arrow? Pierce the arrow, barely not connecting on a Surdy. Well played from Lit here as Rockboom taking the shields from Messages was able to do great work with that in the fight. Removing Quad first took away a lot of the damage. That enabled Lit and Rockboom to actually step up. And now they're looking at the Baron. Looking at the Baron. They got five members strong here. No Quad, no Shaden. I don't think there's any hope here from FlyQuest to deny this Purple Worm being picked up by Lit. Wow, Lit actually able to turn this one back around. Uh, I mean, the Karma Shields, like, Talia and Jin, especially this Jin build, it's not the highest damage comp coming out of FlyQuest Challengers, and they can kite this Trundle pretty well. So it's almost like nullifying the effect that Trundle usually has on Xin Zhao, uh, given, you know, all the shields to get through. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually been kind of a cute game from Lit. I mean, I don't think it's been the cleanest game, but 
the fact that lit after you know the waning phase and uh, how poor things were going and a couple of their lanes are able to get back to this state i, I think it really speaks to their team play and also rock boom man uh, that lane didn't start out very well for Bucks and Rockboom, and Rockboom showing uh, some of his talents and skill as... Okay, Message is going to be forced to flash. Nice setup there by Surdy. Yeah, Rockboom's nice. really showing up here, though. And Message is scaring away. Three members here, the crash down. But look at the re-engage on the other side. The support did not fall. That TP's a little bit too late from Quad, with Message surviving for so long. Finally, unstoppable Surdy with the pullback in on the kiss, though. Curtain call opened up, and Dragoon... Nowhere to be seen. This bot lane falling to shambles here for Lit because FlyQuest again crashing down to this turret. I mean, Surdy got messages flashed, and then messages stepped right back up. He went down. Now Quad, he's hunting for Plux, who's going to have to burn his flash to get away from the pillar. Nice trying to set up from Shaden. Dragoon doesn't have TP. He's been shoving down mid this whole time. Surdy did have to base answer. Yeah, but Dragoon, yeah, Dragoon's actually sticking to this push in the mid lane. He's like, all right, we got to get something back on the map, but they're losing this inhibitor in the bot lane for it. I mean, I can't blame Dragoon. I think he had to stick it. Like, he has to get something. I don't think that he impacts that in him falling or not. That said, he could impact this upcoming fight because Dragoon, he's going for the wraparound. Dragon has spawned. Flyquist challengers are still on the map. Dragoon is level 16. Mm -hmm. Pretty big strong here, but spotted oh. out. And all five members ready to collapse onto Dragoon. Trying to kite back the best he can with the TPs coming in. He shot oh, back in. He's surviving for so long. The pull back in from Plux as he is getting the battle dance away. Just no, he can't get there in time. They've already lost the engage. And now you're engaging on a message with the double kill for Surdy. Then taking down Kisno. Everything's falling apart for Lent. They did a good job at the Baron, but the flash is away. Almost a clean ace because Rock Boom has to throw out the chains of corruptions, but he is chained down. Clean ace for FlyQuest. I mean, Lit, they were split up, and Quad played that fight so damn well. The flash over that mini wall, Mad Magical, to buy the space. I, uh, after that, like, Plux was stuck, right? And it felt like Lit, they just got taken down one by one. It, it did a decent job getting back into this game. They were the ones that had the Baron on their shoulders by Magical, but it's FlyQuest mm -hmm. Challengers ending the game. All of that has been swept away, washed oh, away by FlyQuest as they are cruising to this 2-0. Even if it was a lot of fight there from Lit, unfortunately, it has all been extinguished here. FlyQuest Challengers, they set up the undefeated matchup against Maryville as both of these teams will be playing to see who is top dog in the Challenge League Week 6, Day 1. On the flip side for Lit, I, I don't know. I, I think that we saw some of the weaknesses of Lit. I think that Lit really need to buff up their laying phase here and there. But we do see some of the moments where they do play as a team. Like, Run Rock Boom is enabled. He actually can have good fights. He has good movement and can pump out the damage. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we see other fights where it's like, they're behind, they're split. They're trying to go for plays that aren't really there. I think that Wit, they can make plays as a team. They make those look good, but still, uh, I, I think Wit, they need to actually put a little bit better gameplay together because this is a team where they have two wins on the board and that's great, but they got promoted in the league last split and they don't want to find themselves in that promotion tournament again on the other side. Nope, no, they do not, but yeah. we are going to toss to a break. When we come back, we'll have an interview with Chime on the other side, so we'll see you there. Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. Try the warm and delicious Footlong Cookie, Footlong Pretzel, or Footlong Churro.
Hello, hello. Welcome into the Rally Cry post game interview. We've got Chime from the Victorious 2 0 FlyQuest Challengers. Chime, it's good seeing you, buddy. How are you feeling? I feel good. Uh, that was a fun series. They played pretty well, honestly. So, you know, props to them. Yeah, uh, so I, I do want to ask you that first game, first pick Rel. We've seen Rel mostly be a jungler this split. Uh, once you saw the Rakan, I'm not sure if like that was your decision to flex it bot then. But it's a pick that you've played really well historically. And Rel Rakan, obviously a very popular matchup in the LCS uh, this past summer when you were playing. Um, what's that like for you? It feels like you're very much on engaged duty uh, for this team. But... Uh, like, what's that discussion in pick ban? Was the rel like, hey, I can play this, like, the whole time? Was, like, once you start Recon, it's like, I can do this matchup? What was that discussion like for that game specifically? Um, yeah, I mean, the rel is just a strong, uh, sub-jungle flex, and then we saw this in Zhao, and I was like, hey, Jay, or she didn't, like, do you want to play that into it? And he was like, you know, I can, or I can counter pick it, so we just, depending on what they show, um, if it's, like, I think the Recon rel matchup is a 50-50, like, I'm stronger in lane, but he'll be stronger in team fights. So, um, you know, we both have our, our value. And so, I mean, I'm totally fine with that matchup. It's not, yeah, I think, you know, Trundle's a really good champion in Zin Zhao. So we took that kind of pick, mm -hmm. which was good. All right, Chime, I, I wore this shirt for a reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed today. You know why? I did say, I said, I said pick Blitzcrank. I said, I said in one of the games in draft, okay. I was vetoed. So who do I blame then? Who do I blame? Blame our coach, Rocco. All right, Rocco, I'm calling you out here. <laughs> Let's crank. Come on. Come on. It's okay, though. I mean, I also called out the Rakan and how good you are on that champion as well. You played that game one. And honestly, yeah, I, everyone talks about FlyQuest and, you know, all these pieces look so good as a whole unit. So, like, when we look at this team, now you are 10-2 in, you know, a total games, but you are 5-0 and oh when it comes to the best of threes. And you're going to face off against Maryville next week. Another The team that is exactly tied with you. A 10-2 and 5-0. How do you feel going into that matchup? Um, yeah, I mean, Maryville is a surprisingly good team. Like, I think people didn't power rank them very high, but obviously they're performing well, and I think they have really good team cohesion. Um, and on top of that, I think they have, like, the Niles map play mentality, where they always will just drop a crazy amount of waves. So, I mean, they have a unique style, and it's working for them. And so, I mean, I think that's pretty exciting to see when an ACL team just doesn't play, you know, stock and standard like they figure out their identity and they roll with that so yeah yeah that definitely a matchup that you know all of us following the league given that you are both undefeated very excited for uh in week six day one um I, you know i do want to ask like you specifically being in these shoes i think flyquest challengers you guys have been really strong um what has like been different this year about kind of like practice environment and as you guys have gone through the split do you feel like you're like netting more LCS or high level scrims? Like, are other people in the space putting respect on your guys' name? Because when I watch you guys play, you know, it feels like this is a team that I would be excited to see in LCS. And I know a lot of you have experience in there at some point. Uh, so, like, what's it been like for you this split, kind of going through that? And do you feel like you've been getting better practice throughout as more teams are willing to practice against you? Yeah, I think, I mean, we definitely started scrims late, like, because LCS scrims start way before us. So, mm -hmm. when we started scrimming LCS teams, we were kind of like, just getting rolled on repeat um but you know we could cope and say like hey we haven't been practicing as much as them and also our practice quality isn't as good um and i think across the board we took it as like uh you know we can't get complacent with any scrims because um yeah and and you know been scrimming like latin american teams too um yeah. so we've had some good practice across the board all right that's good to hear all right i'm gonna give you quick time you gotta get quick shout outs here quick shout outs to anyone out there Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, shout out my girlfriend for watching and my family for also watching and my uh, my friends uh, uh, who are all also doing a watch party right now. So shout out to them. Oh, fun. There we go. That's always fun. Well, thank you, Chime, for joining in with this yeah. interview. Congratulations on the 2-0. Can't wait for next weekend to see you face off against Maryville. But for us, we're going to toss to a break. When we come back, we'll get ready for our second series of the day. I'm excited to see how it's going to play out. I hope you all are, too. We'll see you on the other side. Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. 
Try the warm and delicious footlong cookie, footlong pretzel, or footlong churro.